Hey guys, this is Lydia Wenty, the lifestyle coach. I'm very excited for our interview today. Um, and just a reminder for all of you with you know this community, whether you know you've been here before or not, this is really about finding freedom from food. This is about like getting over binge eating, really changing those habits, using the neuroscience principles that I teach here on our Life with Lydia channel. Um, and a big part of recovery from binge eating um, and just having freedom from that, um, whether you call it emotional eating or you know food addiction or whatever it is, um, is really finding you know body acceptance and kind of working through what happens with our body um, as we you know create a more normal and less disordered sort of eating style. Um, so I am very excited about our guest today. And for those of you who want to know a little bit more about um, the principles that um, I, I teach, you can go ahead and go to LydiaWenty.com and get your free ebook on how to stop binge eating and be successful at anything else. Um, and, you know, instead of really looking for like, you know, the perfect meal plan or getting to some like magical weight where you'll just stop binge eating, which is all just kind of like, you know, fairy tale stuff, um, at least from the experience of the women that I've worked with, it is so much more productive to really, um, you know, improve the body image and like have more acceptance rather than try to get your body to a place where something magical will happen. So that's why this is really a theme for us here. So I'm going to introduce our guest today. You guys, Sarah Vance is on the show. I'm so excited to chat with her and we're just going to nerd out about a whole bunch of, you know, body image topics and she has such a cool story she's going to share with us. Um, she is a body image and emotional eating coach. So she helps others to find peace and freedom around their body, food, and self-care. She helps women to reconnect with their inner radiant self and start living the life they truly deserve. So she is a former bikini competitor and fitness model. Um, so she is familiar with extremes and encourages others to find their gray. She believes in the power of our intuition, our mindset, and standing in the power of who we truly are. So um, in the show notes below, I will go ahead and put a link to her website and how you can grab her free guide on five mind shifts to make to embrace your body and experience food freedom. Them. So definitely aligned. Um, so excited to hear more from her. And we are going to bring her on. Um, Sarah Vance, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah, so happy that you're here. And um, for those who don't know your story or, you know, don't know, you know, certain aspects of it, I would love to just start out and hear, tell us a little bit of background, like a story of, you know, how you got here, you know, why you do what you do, that sort of thing. Okay, so I'll try to keep this short and sweet, but it never, it never ends up that way. Um, so by basically my career is I'm an ICU nurse. Um, that's the other aspect of who I am. So when I was in school, I really wanted to basically learn how to be healthy is when I graduated high school or college, I wanted to be healthy. So that's when I got into my whole fitness, you know, routine, yada, yada, yada. And that's when I went down that route. So I went to the gym and started making better choices for myself in regards to how I move my body and how I feel my body um, and eat. And then I ended up getting into strength training, really absolutely loved it. Um, and I actually went to um, a powerlifting meet and there I ended up seeing a bikini competitor. So that is when I decided, like, I want to try this. I want to go down this route. Like, let me just do this real quick because there was um, a few other issues going on in my life um, with my job, my relationships, just a lot of stuff going on. And I thought, you know, when you diet and you go down that route, it gives you that false sense of control, right? So that's kind of what I was wanting. I wanted to just focus everything on myself. Like, I couldn't fix all this other stuff, so let me, you know, fix myself. So I went down that route and um, – you know, my first show wasn't that bad. I was still a little disordered. I kind of did things not the best way. Um, but as you progress down this kind of weight loss or desire to get a goal weight or desire to get a body, leanness, whatever, which way you 
fit, you're never going to like be happy or satisfied with enough. So you just keep chasing and chasing and chasing. And that's the route that I went into. And so the deeper I got into competing, the deeper that I got into my health and fitness, which wasn't really health and fitness, was the more disordered I actually got. So um, I ended up going to my last show, which was in North Carolina. And I remember just laying on the beach being photographed, you know, by a really great photographer. And I was like, is this it? Like, is this this is, this is it. Like, this is it. I didn't have my period. I couldn't go out to eat with my significant other without having a full breakdown, um, you know, over pizza and then binging later on. Um, my nails were not growing just physically, emotionally, mentally, every aspect of myself was not okay. Um, so I knew in the back of my mind, like I really needed to change, but when you're so trapped and obsessed and consumed by that, it's really difficult in the beginning to take that initial leap to get out to the other side. So along with that, you know, my obsession, it kind of rules your life. It becomes everything. So I went down the path of becoming a personal trainer. Um, so I was doing that for a moment too. And I would have all these really amazing human beings, women that would come into my consultations. And it was really surreal to me because I would hear them say, the stuff that I was saying to myself and I would hear them go through the struggles that I was struggling with myself and they're looking for me for guidance and I'm over here like in the same boat like I was struggling and I didn't know what I was doing and I was binging and restricting and hating my body and just all this stuff so it was a really big eye-opener for me to kind of be like oh wow like this isn't just my problem this is this is a big issue with a lot of other people and I'm not alone on top of that and how can I help them really see who they are because that's what was really challenging for me because I saw them in a completely different light. Like I saw these really just amazing human beings for who they are and they just couldn't see it. Um, and that was the same struggle with myself. And I think that's really common is that, you know, we don't see our worth the way it is. Um, so that was one thing. And then I ended up going to another photo shoot and I had been, you know, prepping and doing two a days and going on the whole cycle again. And the photographer, I walked in feeling great. And the photographer was like, don't worry about your stomach. Like we'll Photoshop that. And that's when I was like, okay, I'm done. Like I can't do this anymore. Like I have been, this is a lie. Like all of this is not what I want. I don't want to send this message out to the world. Like I don't want to send this message out to other women, to young women, to men, even like everybody like that, this health and fitness idea. And I am so far from that. Like I am so incredibly disordered. So that's when I really started getting into my own journey of, you know, breaking away from the diet mentality, finding body acceptance and really having freedom around food. And then I decided that that is what I really wanted to do with my life because um, I know how much it has impacted my personal life and I know how much freedom and, you know, love and acceptance there is for other people out there. So that's what I do now. I help women and men feel at peace within their own bodies and figure freedom around food. I love it. That's yeah. Cool. So. Awesome. Beautiful story. So a couple of things like you talked about Sarah in your own journey, there was kind of this point where like, okay, I'm done. Like, no, like I can't do this kind of like that breaking point of like, you were ready to change. Um, and everyone, you know, as we know, has kind of a different journey. Not all of us will be like laying in front of a photographer and like be like, okay, so yeah. for, for those, you know, which is like all our varied journeys, like what would you suggest about you know, that difficult first leap? Like what are some things that women can do to like ease themselves into it or to like give themselves, you know, the bravery or whatever you feel like it is from your experience? Like how can women um, start making that leap? Does that make sense? Well, I don't think that anybody is actually going to feel ready. I think that's a really big misconception that, you know, a lot of times I hear people say, I'm not ready. And the reality of it is, is that you are never going to be ready. Like there's never going to be where you're like ducks are all lined up and you feel like gung ho about breaking away from all this stuff because it really is, it's scary work. It's emotional work. And you're letting go of a lot of stuff that you have personally invested, not only emotionally, mentally, physically, you might have your identity, you know, within that. And that's really challenging to give up. It's really scary because we've been taught all these things from our culture and our society. And we live in diet culture and a fat phobic culture that it's really scary, right? So you're never going to feel ready. Ready. Um, I think that's something that kind of needs to be constantly stated because if you just wait, you're going to be waiting the rest of your life. Um, you're just going to keep waiting. I think the thing is, is that you have enough of those things. Like it wasn't just one event that happened for me that it was like, 
okay, this is it. It was all these small things that kept building up and building up. And then eventually I just got tired of it, period. Like I was like, I can't do this. Like physically I couldn't do it anymore. Like physically my body was fighting back. But on top of that, like when I closed my eyes and really looked at my life and said, is this what I want to do? Like five, 10 years from now? Like, is this what I really want to keep struggling with? I was like, no, like without a doubt, what's, what's really important here? What's something that I really value because I was missing out on so much life. And I think that's something that's really important is like, what's really important to you? What's more important than looking a certain way or being a certain way? What's more important and what do you value? Awesome. And I think that you just put it really well of like, you know, it's a lie, right? It's like, I know that in my own journey, and I hear this a lot is, you know, you, those things that you value, like, it's almost like this twisted lie of you think that if you have the right body, like you'll have those things, right? It's like, okay, well, as soon as I lose this weight, as soon as I have these abs, as soon as I can look in the mirror and feel this certain way, or just when I'm this weight, I will look in the mirror and feel a certain way. Like, then I'll be able to like relax and be with my family and go out with friends. Like, isn't it interesting how we have kind of these images in our head of like, well, once I get to the certain weight, then you have like these images of like out with your friends eating pizza because somehow magically you're going to stay at that impossible leanness once you get there. Like, do you, do you hear that a lot? Yeah. I mean, that's something that I struggled with myself too, is that I think it's just that, idea that we've been sold for so long that like when you have this picture perfect body that is you know one big facade um that media shows us that it's going to be like your key to unlock all this other crap which isn't the case all this other stuff is its own thing like if you want a fulfilling relationship that's its own deal if you want confidence that's its own deal if you want to have freedom around food and be able to go and socialize and be stress-free, that's your own deal. Like these are their own separate beasts to feel worthy and loved and accepted and love yourself and go out and live the life that you truly want. Those are its own things that is totally separate from a body, but that's what we've been conditioned to believe for such a long time, not only from our culture, but how we've been brought up and the media. And it's just, that's just how it is. Yeah. Really, really good. It's, it's so funny how we kind of had those images. I'm just remembering like when I was like little, like a little, like maybe like eight or nine, like I still have this image in my head of like some fast food commercial that I saw with like this really pretty woman and she's like at the library or somewhere and she's just like eating this huge burger and it's like dripping everywhere. And just like, I felt like that's the thing I was chasing just to be able to relax and like eat a huge burger and just be like this happy, skinny but like those things, like they don't, they don't go together. And it's really just something that is like sold to us, you know? Yeah. So I love how you said like, it's its own thing. I think one of those wake up moments for myself was when I actually got close to my goal weight. And I realized that I was so much less happy and so much more obsessed with my body than I was, you know, 20 pounds ago. It's like, oh, wait. I'm not happy. Like hopefully not everyone has to like go to those links to feel that, but. Yeah. And I think that's really common is that we, a lot of people that I've worked with and a lot of people, you know, that I just know in general and myself included, I thought the same thing. I thought, you know, once I get this goal weight or I look this certain way, like I'm going to be able to wear a beach on the bikini and not care. I'll be able to do this and I'm going to be able to go on dates. But the reality of it is I was so consumed. I was so much in my own head that I couldn't even go out and do those things. Cause in reality, you think that you have all this control over stuff, but in reality, it starts to control you. You lose all your power completely around food, around your self-care, your intuition and your trust get totally obliterated. Your confidence becomes less because, you know, that's all that you focus on is your flaws. Like, what can I fix? What can I fix, fix, fix? And it lose, you lose sight of like the whole picture. Yeah. And it's like that never ending journey, right? Mm -hmm. um, something else that you mentioned, Sarah, was you were talking a little bit about like, um, like, like these women, like feeling their own worth and like, it was something that you struggled with. And like, you saw these women struggling with that. Um, what are some ways that women can like start feeling their own worth, no matter, you know, the size, no matter, you know, those sorts of factors, like what are some, some tips that you would give us? So an individual's worth is inherent. Like that is not something that is dependent on anything that you are born with that. That is just what is that's just what it is. You are worthy, period. Um, in order to really cultivate those things, I would say to 
initially start kind of undoing this idea that, you know, our body esteem is the same as our self-esteem. We, we think they're one of the same and they're really not because when you really get down deep enough in the body image issues, it's never about your body. Like it really isn't. It's about your self-esteem. It's about how you really feel about yourself. Um, so, you know, there's a few things like obviously positive self-talk that can only do so much though, but it's about really understanding that who you are as an individual and showing up as who you are. I think that's really powerful to give yourself that allowance and permission to just be who you are, like to the core of who you are, the messy and perfect, beautiful, brilliant self to just show up. And I think allowing that to just be enough and detaching the fact that like your body or the quest for pretty or beauty or anything like that has anything to do with your worth because it absolutely doesn't. Yeah. That's awesome. I know that, um, I'm, I'm a big Elizabeth Gilbert fan, author of like eat, pray, love. Like she's just, she's so great. And she, she said something around this that has, that has been good for me kind of in this, you know, topic that we're talking about is like those things that come up, you know, like you said, like the messy, the whatever is just this kind of idea of like, oh, I love like Lydia, I love that part of you that misspells stuff and then sends it out to 2000 people. And you like, like, I love that part of you. That's just like, you know, messy here, sloppy there. Like, just like whatever it is, like our worth is in all of it. Like the whole package It's not like, this is the stuff that's worth. And this is the stuff that attracts from your worth. It's like, if it's you, it's your worth right? Exactly. That's exactly what it is. You know, I mean, and in reality, like nobody's perfect, right? Like we're all humans. Um, actually what I like to say, if it is what it is, then it's perfect because then there's no argument. If it really is what it is, if you really are who you are, then I think that is perfect. Um, and that's coming from a former perfectionist myself. It took me a long time to like brainstorm that up for my own identity. But, um, you know, in reality, we are all imperfect. We all are messy. We're all in this together. And we, you know, have that human connection and being that, that we're all just trying to figure it out. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. If it is what it is, it's perfect. Right. So if like, if there's a facade on it or if it's Photoshopped or if it's like edited, like we're taking away from the perfection because that thing isn't what it is. Right. Right. Oh, that's really good. Okay. So Sarah, I'm interested in your perspective on, on this because just like with, you know, hearing about different, you know, body positivity topics, like one thing that you said is these women that you are coaching, like you could see like that they're just like amazing, you know, individuals and like the things that they couldn't see themselves. Um, how do you compare that with this idea of like, when we're really critical of ourselves, like our body image, like I know that I, and this is something that, you know, was a hard thing for me to face, but was true for me of, I was so critical of my body that it really made me very critical of other women's bodies. Like, I feel like I have been able to just like love women, just like strangers in the store. Like, I feel like I'm able to just love them so much more now that I'm more okay with myself, like I don't have to judge their size or like, so how do you compare with like that you were able to see like the, the beauty and the inherent worth in these women, but then also with the idea of when we're critical of ourselves, we just tend to be more critical of others. Like, what are your thoughts on that? So I think that anytime that we are being critical of somebody else, you know, specifically in regards to size, shape, ability, age, whatever it may be, um, first of all, it, it is a way that unfortunately our society has said that women bond, um, which is a really messed up way that there's this idea that we have to compete against one another and show our superiority because that's how we're going to get a mate. That's like biologically what has been conditioned to us, like biologically, but that's no longer an issue in modern times, right? Like that's not an issue, first of all. And secondly, like my life is not about finding a mate. I'm sorry. It, it just isn't. <laughs> but um, the latter part of that is when you get to a point that you can really accept yourself, you're going to be more compassionate and, and accepting towards other people. I would love to say that, you know, what comes first, the chicken or the egg, it really came, you know, at the same time for myself. The more that I became accepting to myself, the more that I became accepting for other people. And I really tried to just start seeing people like, as who they are. Like, let me just, let me just strip away all this stuff that I believe. And let me ask you, like, what, who are you? Like the core of who you are in that person's soul, who are you? And anything that would pop up in my head, which I like to call our inner, inner mean voice, which is, you know, your self-critic or, you know, self-doubt, whatever it may be, really ask 
like, why are you showing up? Like, what's going on here? What are you fearful of? Because a lot of times we judge others um, because we're fearful of judgment from ourselves and others as well. So then we project it outwardly and we start judging others because that's what kind of keeps ourselves safe. Yeah. And let's talk. Okay. I love, love, love this topic that you brought up. So let's dive into that. So this inner mean voice, um, I read your article on that really, really good. And one reason that I love it so much is like, um, I know that, you know, my world will, will recognize this as, you know, my term for it is usually like the chatter, right? It's like that we always have this underlying like chatter, you know, this internal dialogue, but then there's specifically like what you say, the mean voice or, you know, the chatter, like that thing that pops up for you. So tell us just a little bit more, like, what do you mean by the mean voice? Like, how does that show up for people? And like, how, how do we react to that? Or what do we do about it? So, um, you know, my inner mean voice, which I call it an inner mean girl, which I probably need to rephrase that, but that's just what I've coined it as because in reality, they're, it's not mean. It's just they, she or that voice has a really poor way of communicating what they're trying to do. So when we really look at that voice, it usually pops up in ways in which we're going to be stepping out of our comfort zone. We're going to become vulnerable. We're going to have insecurity, um, uncertainty, you know, emotional distress you know, just feelings of discomfort, it's going to typically pop up. And it's going to be in the form of you're not good enough, or the latter of like, who do you think you are, you know, Miss thing thinking that she's all this. So either way, it's going to keep you like very much like, okay, I'm not going to go out into this comfort zone because I'm not good enough to do so, or I feel like I'm just overstepping my boundaries. So either way, whichever way that comes, it's basically keeping you in a very set state of where you are. Oftentimes with the people that I work with, that voice is more of the latter of like, you are not good enough. That is the underlying tone, whether it's about food, body, it could come up, you know, in your relationship and your work, it can come up in so many variety of aspects in our life. But obviously the ones I speak about is about food and body. So really what it is, it's shame. That's exactly what it is. It's shame. And you know, the way that we deal with shame is we really get compassionate with it. And we try to be curious about why it's coming up. Because a lot of times, you know, when I first started, I was like saying, you know, like, oh, shut up or, you know, go away. But that doesn't really fix the issue because that is not really understanding why it's showing up and how to handle it for when it shows up next time, because it will continuously show up in your life and other aspects. Like I said, it might not be about food and body anymore when you have freedom around those things. Maybe it'll be around your work or the fact that you're a parent, whatever it may be, but becoming really curious and say, what's, what's going on here? Like, you know, what, what's going on? What's happening? I, I can see that you're, you know, wanting to say something. So what is it? Because really it's there to keep us safe. That's what it really wants to do. It wants to protect you against judgment. It wants to protect you against going out of your comfort zone because that is when you're open to vulnerability. That's when you're open to being, you know, judged and being imperfect and being flawed and all this other stuff. But what it doesn't realize is that stepping out of that comfort zone is also the path to love, to connection, to success, to feeling worthy, to feeling like you are enough and having freedom and living the life that you want. It doesn't realize there's all these positive things. It just realizes you know, the worst case scenario of like, oh my gosh, what are people going to think? And it's about working through that and saying, okay, I hear you that, you know, you're fearful and you want me to be safe, but you know what? I'm okay. Like people can think what they want and I'm going to be okay with that because I might, you know, end up falling in love or I might end up, you know, having freedom around food. I might end up, you know, being able to go live my life how I want it. So getting really curious about what going is going on with that voice, the underlying tone of that voice after the initial like rah, claws come out, the underlying tone of what's going on and then addressing it in a very curious and compassionate way is how you're really going to be able to maneuver through that voice in your life. Beautiful. That's so awesome. And I think pretty much anyone that you, you talk to, like so many people I've had on the show, like anytime you're working with people, there's, there's this this theme, this element that comes up, this voice of fear, the inner mean girl, the chatter, you know, Brene Brown calls it the gremlins, you know, it's like, um, you know, uh, Julia Cameron calls it, you know, the critic, like they're all, or the censor, like this thing, like dealing with this voice, I feel like is such a huge hinge point in life. Because like you said, on the other side of that voice, that's trying to keep you safe, that's trying to help you survive. On the other side of that is like, 
like love and acceptance and freedom around food. But all those things are change. And change is a threat to survival. Because like, hey, you know, you've gotten along for 30 years hating yourself. Like, we're still alive. Just keep hating yourself because like, yeah. that's what's kept us safe. Um, I love what you said about like being curious about it. I know that um, a lot of you are going to recognize this principle of like in calling out the chatter. You know, one question that, you know, I post to people is like, just say, oh, isn't that interesting? I like, oh, the chatter is saying, you know, that like, I can't wear shorts because this is what my thighs, oh, isn't that interesting? Like, I just love that you talked about like getting really curious about it. And this is really like, you know, these are neuroscience principles, you guys. It's like when we take that sort of like, you know, visceral, like you said, the claws come out, right? It's like, no, you've got to be safe. Like, don't change. Um, getting curious is really using this part of our brains that's like, oh, you can look at it and you can look at it from sort of this meta point of view so you're not in the emotion. So yeah. I love that. Yeah, getting curious, I think, is the answer for like most anything in life. So. Yeah, I mean, I think that's definitely, you know, and that comes with a lot of the self-doubt issues around that. It's just like, be curious about what, what narrative are you really telling yourself? Like, what narrative are you buying into? Like, what, who says these things? Like, curiosity is so, like, it has done wonders for the work that I do with myself and with my clients has just become really curious and having that emotional, like almost taking a very stepped back approach and looking at it from like almost, you know, like you're not in it and being like, okay, let me, let me see what's really going on here. Like what's, what's the underlying cause. But I think one of the big issues too is being able to recognize when that comes up first, that would be the first thing to be able to call it out and say, aha, I hear you. <laughs> like I, I hear what you're saying and I see you, I see you. So what's going on? Because for so long, especially in the beginning, that voice becomes your voice. You no longer see it as a detachment. And so becoming aware first is a big step to be able to be like, okay, I see what's going on here. And now I'm aware because then you can make a conscious decision to say, do I want to like go over here and like play with this, um, you know, buy into it? Or do I want to continue down this path? Yeah. And uh, like, that's such a big step is to not recognize it necessarily as your own voice. Just like, oh, like, I see you. Not like, I know me. Like, I see you. Like, it's a thing separate. It's that, like, it's that underlying, you know, keep you safe sort of thing. I love how you talked about how it ties into shame. And like, and in the curiosity, I feel like, you know, it, what it kind of points to is to, to look at it. Like, there's so much power in just looking at something and having it be out in the open because shame would have us not look at it, right? It's like, what? I feel bad about my body. Don't, 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 don't look at it. Like that feels bad to look at it. But if you really just like, like look under the bed, see if there's a monster, you know what I mean? It's like uncover it. It, it diffuses shame so much. And then you can just also love it, right? It's like, oh, I see you. I see how you're trying to keep me safe. Oh, I love that part of me. It tells me that I can't go out with friends because I'm not at my goal weight. Like, thanks. Thanks for trying to keep me safe. You know, it's like your inner mean girl is like, she's, she's just a regular girl. She just feels like she has to be mean, right? To keep yeah. you safe. That's what I'm saying. Like she just has really poor communication skills. <laughs> she yeah. has great intention, just poor communication skills. Yeah. You can just pat her on the head and be like, Hey, thanks. Thanks for the yeah. message. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so good. Um, but speaking of the message, like, yeah, there's our underlying, like, um, that, that chatter, the inner mean girl that we have going on. But I, I feel like that really stems from, I mean, we get that from somewhere, right? Like there's so many like, like messages. So like Sarah, I mean, you've been, you've been in like in the, in the fitness world and in the competition world, like, will you help us understand kind of that, that culture, that mentality? I feel like a lot of us like see this airbrushed woman on an advertisement in the mall and just think like, wow, you know, she eats healthy and like works out, you know, 20 minutes a day when really like there's so much more extreme that goes into that and then she still has to be photoshopped. So maybe kind of like debunk some myths or like tell us a little bit about what actually goes into, not that this is everyone's story, but like, you know, for the most part, like what goes into these sort of extreme bodies, like the extreme. 
Yeah, so I think, you know, and I'm glad you brought up the point that this isn't everybody's story because what I went through is not necessarily what another individual is going to go through. So I can't speak for other individuals, but I've seen more times than not that, you know, as soon as you start like really being conscious about your body, then and, and you make that like your project, which is what, you know, bodybuilding is about and about like sculpting and everything else, your body becomes your project. Like that is the sole purpose, which if you're just going to do that, then every time that you're going to look in the mirror, you're going to be ready to like pinpoint all these things that you think is wrong. And you're going to get into comparison and you're going to get into all or nothing. So I know that for me, um, you know, I was eating hardly anything and feeling completely crazy around food because, you know, the biggest fear was how is this food going to affect my body? I didn't really care about anything else. How is this food going to affect my body? And the only other reason why I'm eating is because it's fuel. Right. Like, and I say this with quotation because I think food is a lot more than just fuel. Um, so, and then on top of that, I was doing up to three hours a day in the gym, like without a doubt, you know, I had no energy. Like I had to take a nap in order to go to my actual job. Like there was no doubt about it. My metabolism was wrecked. I had no energy, no like emotional capacity because I was just a ball of stress and anxiety because you get so out of whack on your hormones. Um, and you know, you just become very obsessed and controlled by food, but then you buy into it because it's like, Oh, I'm going to control harder and harder and harder. And so you just go into this whirlwind of a circle. Um, and even on top of that, like it isn't practical for most people. Like it really isn't unless it becomes your life. And if that's the choice that somebody really wants to make, I can't, I can't tell them not to. But I know for me, when it came down to it, there was a lot more that I valued. And my body naturally is not thin or lean. There are some people out there that naturally really are thin and they really are lean and they can eat whatever they want and spend minimal amount in the gym. But for me and the majority of people that I work with and that I've seen, it isn't the case. You're going to have to put in a lot of effort, a lot of work, a lot of energy, emotional, physical, mental all of it and have it become your life before you can get to that. And it's just not practical. It really isn't or sustainable. Yeah. That's, I, that's a great way to put it. It's just like, you know, how your body naturally shows up. And like, there are people, like you said, with the body types where, you know, that, that makes more sense. I, I know that for myself, I really made a shift from, I used to think like, Hey, if you, if you, work hard enough, especially if I work hard enough, then I can have that body that I want, right? It's like, if my legs get thin enough, they'll look longer. Like, it was like, I really had this lie in my head that if I worked hard enough, I could get there. And I did really manipulate my body a lot with what I did. But like you said, there are things that you value more, like there's a huge cost. And you can't really change your body like you can do extreme things to make it do something for a certain amount of time before you lose your period and your hormones go crazy and you pick up an autoimmune disorder <laughs> like, you know, like all yeah. these things but like how your body naturally shows up like you know i'm more of an earthy curvy kind of girl and there's nothing that i will do to change those genetics right like, like, yeah so i love how you said that like so with just how we are naturally you know some of us are more you know, lean and some of us are naturally more curvy or whatever it is, the whole spectrum. Like as we have more normal eating or as we kind of get out of these cycles, what would you say, Sarah, that we can do? Because I know for me, it was a, it's a scary time to see your body, like how it really is. Um, how can women like in that process accept their bodies more or kind of like deal with that. Okay. So this is actual me. It is what it is, right? How do they deal with that? So, I mean, the biggest fear that people have is this underlying fat phobia that we've been taught in our culture. That's really what it comes down to, especially if you're coming from thin to, you know, possibly gaining weight that you might need. Like I physically had to in a healthy, I had to healthily gain weight. I had to, in order to have what I really want, um, you know, or, or be in a, in a healthier state because I wasn't then now I would consider myself healthy. Um, so one of those things is to really like try your best to surround yourself with different and diverse bodies. So bodies that are not only 
the way that you are, but bigger can help and just like changing what you're constantly seeing because in the media, we're only seeing one type. So that can do wonders for your own self. Um, and going out and like living in the world, like try as much as you can to not be here so much and be here. Like what are those things that you really want to do that you kept saying, you know, well, when I get this way or whatever, then I'm going to, you know, um, go out on a date or get this promotion or whatever, like go after those things, like work through that and go after and live the life that you really want. Um, and then still, you know, one of the big things for me was, um, doing the work around my ideals around fat. Um, we have this idea that fat is bad, like, and it's not, it's not fat is just fat. And some people identify themselves as fat. And I think that can be really, really empowering and powerful, not only in my own journey and to healing, um, to kind of reclaim that word that like, okay, so they're fat. Or if it's somebody else, like I'm fat, I don't identify myself as fat, but they're fat or the other individual I'm fat, but I'm also all these other things. Like it's not just the only identifying factor of who you are. Like, it isn't just like, well, I'm fat and that's it. No, you're somebody else. Like you're an individual. Like what else are you? Like what, what do you do? What do you like? What are you, what's unique about you? Like how are you showing up in this world? Like what are you doing? You know what I mean? Like those things are really important. But the biggest thing is to get curious again about your ideals around weight gain and fat. What are you, what narrative are you buying into about that? And then also, you know, I think it's important to say, your body's not just going to continuously gain weight, right? Like it's going to reach a point that it's, it's happy self. Um, and that's just a very superficial level of body image work because there's also another layer of like, okay, what if you are fat? Then that's, it comes in with the whole reclamation of the word fat and the idea around it. But the super, superficial area is like your body's not just going to continuously get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Like it's going to level out. And you have to be okay with whichever that is and yeah. going out and living your life, like not allowing this to hinder yourself, like going out, being in your body. <laughs> and I think just the process of letting those things happen. Like, I, I love how you're giving tips of like, Hey, these are things that you can do. Um, because I, I feel like doing those things kind of helps change the narrative. It's not like you have to give yourself a new narrative. It's like, oh, I'm just, I'm around more diverse bodies. I'm willing to look at everything and everyone. I'm, you know, I'm willing to be curious about it and to just kind of like, like let it happen. And I just want to like put an exclamation point on what you said about like how your body will not just keep going and gaining weight. I know this kept me in my cycle for so long. Because anytime I'd eat more than like 900 calories a day, I started gaining weight and it freaked me out. And it's almost like you go into like this, this damage control, like, oh my gosh, if I eat a hundred more calories, I start gaining weight. So I've got to go down to even fewer now, you know, but just knowing like if you start giving your body what it needs, it'll start getting to that, like that happy place, you know, yeah. like I gain my weight pretty quickly. Yeah. It was my weight, like the, the fat that I needed on my body to be in a healthier place. And it took me a while to have the bravery to let my body do that yeah. and to give myself that real experience of like, okay, and now I've just been here for a while and I haven't, you know, kept gaining, you know, pounds after pounds after pounds. It's not like you're like, yeah. So just like wanted to put an exclamation point on that. Like just trust it, like trust yeah. that you're not going to just like die from obesity if you start eating normally. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's super scary, but I think it's still important to kind of look around those ideals. Um, and you know what, like I used to think that once I got to a certain weight or, you know, once I gained the weight, like my whole life would implode on me. And the exact opposite is what happened. That's when I started cultivating the life that I had always imagined. That's when I was like able to go out and do, after doing the internal work with, you know, self-esteem and stuff like that, that's when I was able to wear a bikini and not care and be okay with speaking, you know, speaking up and really stepping into my power as a woman and eating the foods that I really want and really enjoying it. Like, reconnecting with my freaking friends because for so long I was disconnected from life because I was so stuck in this. So along with my weight gained, I gained so much more to life, so much more. And that's really scary. And I didn't know that. And a lot of people, you know, you really don't know that going into it because you're so like in here still, 
But the reality of it is, is it's not as bad as what you are perceiving or thinking that it's going to be. Your life is not going to implode. If anything, it'll probably get better. Yeah. And it's one of those things that like, you can listen to us tell you that, but it's like, it, like there's nothing like personal experience, right? There's nothing like, hey, what if I just did this thing, even though I'm scared and just kind of like see, even just in little ways, right? Like it doesn't have to be like, okay, I've got to just accept myself, you know, 40 pounds heavier, 30 pounds or whatever it is. But just like those little things, like, you know, just looking at, you know, more diversity. Like I remember, and it's a process that, that happens gradually, but in a cool way. I know that when I started working on body acceptance, there was a day where I was at the mall and I looked around at all of like the posters and advertisements and all the women looked the same. It was like the same body type, the same leanness, the same shape, all the same. And then I looked at the actual people in the mall walking around and there was this huge diverse population. None of them really looked like the posters, but they all looked very different of all different shapes. And I realized in that moment that I didn't look at people before I worked at this, like worked on this. Like I would go to the mall and I would remember the girl that was skinnier than me. And I was like, what else do I need to do? Like, it's like you almost put on blinders to the things that you don't want to see. I would see the posters of the girl and then the girl in real life that kind of looked like the posters and just like erase everyone else from my mind. And just those little things that start coming into your life of like satisfaction and joy. And yeah, I love that. Um, something that you said, Sarah, that I wanted to go back to is you said food is more than fuel. Can we like talk about food for a second? Like yeah. Yeah, thoughts on food, about it being more than fuel, like your relationship with food, how, is it, how, how it's evolved. Like what is food? Oh man. So food is just food. That's exactly what I say. Food is food. That's it. Now, of course we can go to, the next step below that, which is when we really start looking at food and allowing it to be, it is fuel, right? Like it is, it gives us energy. It gives us me energy to, to talk to you. It gives me energy to, you know, work out, it gives me energy, right? And it feeds my brain to be able to concentrate. It is fuel, but that's not the only thing. And that's what the health and fitness industry that's so common is like, oh, it's just fuel. Okay. But what about grandma's pie that I eat? And that brings me back to, you know, memories from when she was alive. What about that? Well, that's because food is not only fuel, but it's also emotional. It's also connection. It's also social interaction. It can also be healing. Um, it can also be pleasure. I think that's one thing that a lot of people don't talk about is that food can be pleasurable. Like you can actually eat cake and enjoy it and it be okay. Like there's no reason that you, like you shouldn't feel guilty about enjoying the pleasure of food. Um, so it's a lot more than just fuel. It is fuel, but there's a lot of other stuff that people aren't talking about. And so when people deviate from, you know, they're like, oh, well, I'm going to eat grandma's pie or I'm going to eat these cookies or pizza or even a salad for enjoyment and it's not necessarily fuel, then I feel bad. I've done something bad and I'm, I'm an awful human being and then we get into the shame cycle once again and then you just rabbit hole down the same cycle that you've been in. So if you just normalize food altogether and realize that it is a lot more than just fuel, you're going to be able to take bigger steps in jumping away from that cycle. Yeah, awesome. And I know that um, one thing from my experience, and you know, I hear this a lot as well, is like we, we miss out on that pleasure we miss out on like all the the wonderful things about food um a lot of times when we just have so much anxiety around it or have disordered eating i know like when, when i was bulimic like the idea of food was like so like manic exciting like nothing in the world is better than eating a ton of food and i knew it wasn't a healthy feeling but it was like this like extreme like right to the veins like you know like food right yeah it's so interesting like as we as we heal our eating and our relationship with food like i don't have so much excitement about food anymore but I, but I have pleasure and I have fun and I have creativity and like all of these things that when we're on the extremes of like hating food and then being way excited about food, like I just feel neutral about it most of the time. And sometimes it's just annoying, like, ah, I'm doing some stuff. I've got to eat. You know, it's like <laughs> the way that I never thought in my whole life I could ever feel yeah. is like being annoyed that I needed to eat. Yeah. Um, we miss out on all of the pleasure of the gray, like you said, right? Like bringing a full circle, like, like the gray in our food experience is where all the pleasure is. And so just like, 
it's it's a beautiful thing so i'm glad yeah, it really it really is beautiful and that's what i really wish for everybody around food in addition to feeling at peace within their body because i mean when it comes down to it the majority of issues around food it's not really a food issue it's about how it's a body image issue is when you really get down to the the level 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 a lot of times it's how you feel about your body so i mean they definitely tie into one another but i would that's my whole purpose is to allow people to have freedom pure freedom around food where not only they can make choices and saying i want to eat a salad right because a lot of i think there's this idea that when you break away from the diet cycle like you'll never eat anything green again which is just ridiculous but um where you can make decisions and say well i want to eat a salad or you can make a decision and say i want to eat a cake or even make the decision to say, I don't want either. Like that's a really empowered place versus like feeling like you have to lock your, like sit like this around cake and pizza and be like, oh my God, like feel crazy. <laughs> like It just doesn't make sense. And it's, it's that permission. It's that permission and that body acceptance work that you do that just really allows you to not feel crazy around food anymore. That's what it really is. It's not willpower. It's nothing like that. It's permission. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Just like, permission and curiosity like these are all just like beautiful themes for like a great life and just like a life with so much more you know pleasure and fun and thank you for doing the work that you do Sarah oh, you thank you as well awesome um and then I just I didn't want there to be like some burning thing that you would want the woman of the world to know that we didn't touch on like is there anything that comes to your mind of just like if I could just tell the women watching like this like does that come to mind if what you'd want to the message for them? Yes. So your worth is inherent and your body is worth being here. You are worth being here. And we want to see you show up. We need you to show up in this world. We need you to show up. So please start doing it. There's no wrong way to be in your body. There's no wrong way to eat. We just need you to show up and allow yourself to be enough because you are. You really, really are. Beautifully said. Thank you so much, Sarah. Oh, thank you. The gorgeous message. I hope you guys were listening very well to that. Um, like rewind and listen to it again. Like it's good stuff. Um, and please check out more of Sarah Vance, uh, sarahvance.com. She has some amazing things there and you can get um, you know, what we talked about earlier, I'll put the link in the show notes so you can um, get to that as well. Um, and then again, of course, you can go to LydiaWenty.com um, for more information about, you know, what I do, the principles that I coach. I think that we're women of the same heart. Like we just want women to like, like be okay with their bodies and have a great relationship with food. And like, like, let's just have everyone who wants to, to be able to embrace that. Um, so get her guide, my guide at LydiaWente.com. Um, lots of great resources in this. I really feel like this growing community of women, just helping women to have peace and happiness in their lives. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and just be able to relax, like have that mental energy back. So yes. go out and be in the world because that's what we want to do. That's what we need be in the world and show up and all of that good stuff. So thank you so much, Sarah, for being on the show today, thank really you. your time and your message. Um, and this is Lydia Wenty, the lifestyle coach signing off. Mwah.